I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. We upgraded the flow on the budget build tank, we upgraded the lighting on the budget build tank, now it's time to upgrade the water chemistry. See, for corals to be happy, they need better water chemistry than what you would find in the budget build tank. For the most part. Soft corals are very hard to get even like dirtier water. Hard corals are pickier and have more complex needs and we'll get into hard coral water quality in the next video. Start with soft corals and then work your way into hard corals. Just because soft corals are okay in dirtier water, that doesn't mean you get to ignore the water chemistry in your soft coral budget reef tank. See, so in the budget reef tanks, we've got stronger lighting, and if you've got stronger lighting and then dirtier water, you've got the perfect recipe for something that's not much fun called an algae outbreak. Algae is photosynthetic. In other words, it needs light to grow, and algae also needs nutrients to grow. If your tank's water is dirty and therefore full of nutrients, the algae has what it needs to thrive and it can take over your tank. Algae outbreaks are much easier to avoid than they are to fix, so set yourself up for success and keep your tank's water clean. What does good water quality look like in the soft coral budget reef tank? First, keep your salinity between 1.024 and 1.026. Then just like on the budget build tank, you want low phosphates and low nitrates. And now there's a new kit on the block for you to pay attention to called alkalinity. First, nitrates and phosphates. Pro tip. On the budget soft coral reef tank, keep your nitrates below 10 parts per million. Phosphates should be kept below 0.10 parts per million. Okay, so how do you maintain those levels? First, feed good quality fish food. I avoid flake foods for saltwater fish and I only feed pelleted foods if I'm going to be away from my tank for several days and I don't have a tank sitter to feed my fish. Feeding a quality frozen food like pea mysis is one step in keeping your tank's water quality good. Also keep in mind to only feed enough foods such that your fish get two to three bites when they eat. That much food is plenty and they'll always look hungry no matter how much you feed them. Second, don't overstock your tank. The fish I laid out for you in the budget build series are perfect for a budget reef tank as they don't produce a lot of waste and they're easy keepers. You're probably gonna want more fish and I can understand, but keep it easier on yourself and stick to the fish I outlined. Third, water changes. When your tank's nitrates get above 10 parts per million, and phosphates rise above 0.10 parts per million, then it's time to do a water change. You'll know when your tank's water reaches those levels by testing your tank's water with test kits. For nitrates, I recommend the Salford or Nios nitrate kit. For phosphates, use a Salford kit, and if you wanna make things easier on yourself, here's a good upgrade. If you're tired of comparing color cards like in other phosphate kits, then the HANA phosphate checker is an accurate way to get phosphate readings from your tank. Instead of comparing the water in a test file to a color card, the HANA Phosphate Checker gives you a digital readout of the phosphate levels in your tank. It's a great upgrade to your budget reef tank that you can keep with you for future builds, and it makes your life a heck of a lot easier. We've covered nitrates and phosphates, and now it's time to talk about the new kit on the block, alkalinity. Alkalinity is a measure of how much acid it takes to lower the pH in your water to the point that bicarbonate turns into carbonic acid. Well, what the heck does that mean? Think of it this way. The higher the alkalinity, the more resistant the water is to chemical changes. Okay, that's straightforward. Therefore, a higher alkalinity is better, right? Uh, not so much. I run reef tanks with high and low alkalinity levels, and the tanks on either end of the spectrum did fine. For your budget soft coral reef tank, keep your tank's alkalinity between 7 and 10 dKH. And you're going to find out your tank's alkalinity by testing it with a test kit. The Salford Carbonate Hardness Kit is my basic recommendation kit. And if you're looking for a nice upgrade for your reef tank that you're going to keep with you for a long time, go for the HANA Alkalinity Checker. There's no color cards to compare, no drops to count, just a digital readout of your tank's alkalinity level. And it's going to make your life easier. When your phosphate and nitrate levels are too high and your alkalinity levels are below 7 dKH, it's time for a water change. There's a catch though. You don't want to do a water change with any salt. You want to do a water change with a salt that's formulated for a reef tank. Reef tank salts have higher levels of alkalinity and other elements that your corals need to grow. And if you follow my advice from the budget build series to use the Fritz RPM salt, then you've been using a reef tank salt this whole time. I've been setting you up for reef tank success since day one. To make the water change worth your time, do a 50% or 10 gallon water change on your budget soft coral tank. A 10 gallon water change will lower the phosphate and nitrate levels and raise your alkalinity levels to bring your tank's perimeters back within a safe range. You can still use dechlorinated tap water for your water change, and now that you've got a reef tank, now is a great time to strongly consider using RODI water. RODI water stands for Reverse Osmosis Deionized Water. 
RODI water is very clean and free of contaminants that can harm your corals. You can buy RODI water at your local fish store, or you can pick up an RODI unit and make your own. I want to have as much control as I can for what goes into my system, so I've been running RODI water on my reef tanks since day one. Keeping a reef tank does require more effort than a fish only with live rock tank. And don't make the mistake of thinking that keeping a reef tank is difficult. Soft coral reef tanks are very forgiving, yet the corals that are in them are also very pretty. Now if you're looking for a reef tank that's going to challenge you more and reward you with a wider variety of corals and colors, a hard coral reef tank is what's next for you. I'll talk about hard coral reef tank chemistry in the next episode. I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the hard coral reef tank episode.